This video unboxing, the Odyssey G9, is sponsored by Samsung. This is one of the most exciting monitors. That's it. On paper, it has absolutely everything it needs to make it the ultimate gaming monitor. Zero compromises. That is assuming you can find a safe way to get it out of the box. Oh, hi. No problem. It's 49 inches, which is basically the equivalent of having two 27 inch monitors side by side. It is unlike anything I have ever seen before. This has got a 1000 R curve, which basically means that the radius of a circle of these monitors would be just a thousand centimeters, one meter. That is freaking unbelievable. It puts a smile on my face. The whole idea of curved displays didn't last long in TVs. Not because it's a bad idea though. In fact, if you look closely at a movie theater screen, it's probably curved. And the reason is that it allows the entire screen to be an equal distance from your eyes. So if you have to look around from one place to another, you don't have to refocus them. For a TV, by the time you're a reasonable enough distance from it, there's not really much difference from the edge of the panel to the middle of it at that size. Not so for a monitor. It is taking up such an enormous part of your field of vision that it could make a ton of sense to have it curved. Honestly speaking though, as cool as that is, that's one of the least exciting things about this monitor to me. Everything else is equally mind-blowing. So it's got a 5120 by 1440 panel. That's cool, we've, we've seen that before in, in a gaming display. But what we haven't seen is that at a 240 hertz refresh rate with VESA Display HDR 1000 certification. So I'm expecting a spectacular HDR gaming experience on this puppy and a rated response time of one millisecond with all the color accuracy that you can expect from a QLED panel. That's right, quantum dot. Now's a good time to get a look at the bottom. It's got dual display port inputs, uh, USB 3 hub, uh, audio, as well as an HDMI port. But guys, if you wanna run this thing anywhere near its maximum resolution and refresh rate, you're gonna wanna use display port with a DP 1.4. Wow, it's heavy. Oh, compatible graphics card. It's like the one piece battle station. Look at it. The stand has a built-in headphone holder and you can pop it off. Hey, I finally got the technique down for that after fighting with the one on the G7. Oh yeah, upside down, that doesn't help. There we go, nice. Brandon brings up a good point. Uh, Reach around ain't feasible if you want to grab your headphones and the up and over is, uh, yeah, you know what? It's doable. It's doable. It's doable. It's not that tall. It's not, yeah, I, uh, okay. So I'm like, <laughs> I can't reach my arms are too short. This is a desk pad and it makes it look small. It's like a gigantic mouse pad. 120 Hertz and 60 Hertz are the only things available in the drop down. Turns out you're gonna have to do a little menu magic. Refresh rate, 120, boom, 240. And assuming your graphics card supports it properly, there it is, 5120 by 1440, 244 hertz. I had a moment there where I thought maybe it was too good to be true, but it's not. And making matters more interesting, yes, you have to go from 10-bit down to 8-bit, but we're still able to use RGB as the output color format. What that means is we shouldn't see any kind of chroma subsampling that's gonna hurt the readability of text. And in fact, we don't. Now there have been high refresh rate displays with this resolution up to 144 Hertz already, but to reach that maximum refresh rate, you ended up with this kind of uh, this fringing on text, which maybe isn't a big deal for most games, but a lot of games actually do have a fair bit of text. Of course, one of my favorite quick and dirty evaluations is just dragging around a window filled with text and seeing how readable it is. Right off the hop, I don't know if I, Oh wow, vertical is really good. Horizontally though, I'm definitely getting a little bit more smearing. Oh, I definitely want to change to, wow. Oh, 
I don't know who's gonna put this in high brightness mode, but that is not look atable for me anyway. Wow, the G7 spoiled me. I was expecting RGB on the front too. Wow, actually they did a way better job of the RGB on the back. That has like two more layers of acrylic that it kind of shines through. That is really sweet. You'll never see it. It's on the back of your monitor that presumably you're gonna spend most of your time looking at the front of, but like, you know, you'll know it's there. <laughs> wow. At my normal comfortable DPI setting, I have to move my mouse over a foot to get it all the way across the display. Now the question becomes, will there be any games that we can drive at what is effectively half of 5K resolution at 240 frames per second? CSGO seems like a reasonable candidate, but guys, that is a lot of F <laughs> Hello, Mr. Terrorist, standing in a black void over there. Let's do hard bots today. Oh boy, I need so much mouse. I, I think a wireless mouse would be basically essential if you were gaming on something like this every day. No, I got killed by a bot. I wouldn't say that it helps significantly in like a competitive sense, but it definitely increases the immersiveness. A lot of games will actually shrink your vertical view rather than increase your horizontal view when you have a super widescreen monitor. And the more widescreen your monitor is, the more pronounced that effect is. Another thing you'll probably notice is that depending on how well the game supports widescreen, you'll see a different degree of stretching in your peripheral vision. Uh, we might be able to help with that a little bit by changing the FOV in the game. We're not even managing to sustain 240 FPS all the time. This is even in CSGO, which is not exactly a demanding game. Like I'm sitting, oh, actually, okay, I'm sitting at 260 right now. With a Core i9, like 10900K, like the, the very fastest gaming CPU, it's possible I wouldn't see these dips. I'm running a Threadripper right now. It's great CPU, just not entirely gaming focused. Just like the G7, I'm really impressed with Samsung's restraint when it comes to the color settings. Instead of cranking up the vibrance of the colors, it's all actually accurate looking in its sRGB mode. Uh, what we haven't tried yet though is HDR and that's where I'm expecting this one to really shine compared to not only its G7 cousin, which is only VESA Display HDR 600 certified instead of 1000, but also compared to competition. Cause like I said, this isn't the only half of 5K gaming monitor on the market. It's just the only one that is Display HDR 1000 certified. There's a slight flicker at 240 Hertz HDR. What I suspect is that if we disable adaptive sync, that will probably go away. Yep. Interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Of course that makes sense. Uh, you can adjust the response time, uh, the low input lag mode and all that stuff when you aren't using adaptive sync. Did I mention HDR is a little weird on Windows? It's working. So we've got these super bright and yet it's kind of crazy. It's still got like detail left in it. Super bright areas of the image and no loss of detail in the shadows, just as you'd expect from an HDR gaming experience. One thing I do want to try, so I'm at 60 hertz now because that was a diagnostic step that I took. Let's go ahead and pump it to 120, which should also be fine. Oh, we're good. Should I, should I push to 240? Should be fine. Like, theoretically, it should be fine. Oh. <laughs> Something that you're always gonna get on full array local dimming displays is uh, halo effects around really sharp borders between bright and dark objects. Much harder to detect in game. So from a gaming standpoint, I really don't consider it to be an issue unless you play a lot of games where you've got a white mouse cursor moving around on a really dark background, then I can find it distracting and I do tend to turn it off. Man, that's smooth. This is on an RTX 2080 Super as well. It goes to show you with G-Sync, you really don't need all 240 FPS in a sightseeing exploration game like this one. 
That's more just for your competitive shooters. The experience today makes my first impressions pretty simple. If you've got like 1600 US dollars to spend on a monitor, this checks more boxes than anything else that I've ever seen before. We do need to do some more investigation into this slight flickering effect in HDR mode, as well as really explore how good these pixel response times are, because to my eye, they look amazing, but that's gonna have to wait for the full LTT video. For now, guys, thanks again to Samsung for sponsoring this first look, sending over their G9 as well as their G7 in that freaking awesome crate over there. And you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe.